In this Lightroom quick tutorial, I'm going to walk you through processing two images that I took in Melbourne, Australia, just to show you a contrast control and things that you can do with the basic sliders really quickly in under two minutes per image. So I'm going to show you the first one, which is taken in a famous back alley that is known for its graffiti. So this is the before, and we're going to make it look like something like this. And the second image we're going to do is also a famous Melbourne landmark, the train station. We're going to go from this one to this one. Okay, so we're going to straighten some horizons and fix a few of the problems really quickly, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so let's start with the first one. So the first one, the first thing that I do is I go to my basic panel. So if you're in the library module, head over to develop. You can use D as your keyboard shortcut to get there or just click develop up in the top. When you get to the develop module, uh, start with the basic panel first. So basic is all the things that are going to affect the, mostly the exposure and the contrast control of your image. So the first thing that I notice about this is there's a lot of contrast and there's a lot of red saturation. Okay, so generally I'm going to move my clarity up a little bit, which adds sort of local contrast, but I'm going to bring my highlights down. Now there's a little shortcut on the keyboard with your mouse. If you click your Alt or Option key and then click on the slider, it will show you the highlights that are currently being clipped. As you drag the slider to the left, it's going to darken any of those highlights. You can just keep going to the left until you have no warnings left like that. In this case, it's all the way. Okay? That also works on the shadow slider, okay? on the white slider, and on the black slider. Okay? In the case of the blacks, though, we actually do want to retain some of the blacks and maybe even have a little bit more because the lack of black in your image makes it really dull and lifeless looking. It's the black that's going to add that contrast in. Okay, so I've pulled the whites back in, and just a quick before and after, you can see that it's already pulling that sky in, okay, and it's pulling some of the detail into the wall as well. The other thing that I want to do is uh, I've added a little bit of clarity, okay, I want to correct the color, it looks a little bit yellow to me. So if you know that there's something in your image that is pure black or pure white, you can use this little eyedropper and grab it by clicking on it and then drag it over and, and just place it on something that you know to be black. Now I'm pretty sure that this guy's shirt is black and I'm also pretty sure that this wall is black. So I'm gonna use the wall <clears throat> and just click on it and you'll notice that it's changed the color. Okay, now for my taste, it's a little bit on the blue side, so it's gone a little bit too far. So I'm gonna bring it back just a tiny bit warmer using the top temperature slider, okay? So I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, now we're gonna to start to do some of the other adjustments. Head down to the lens correction panel, okay? In Lightroom 5, it makes it really easy. All you have to do is check these two boxes off and go over to profile. If your lens is one like mine and it's not found by Lightroom, just select the brand from the list and it usually will find the lens that you're using. In this case, my 17 to 35. So that's got the correct lens and you see what it's doing is it's correcting for some of the lens distortion and vignetting on the edges. Okay? In this case, I actually want to add a little bit of the vignetting back to keep the edges just a touch darker. Okay? The next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the effects panel, one down, and I'm going to add an overall edge vignette. So this is going to darken. Now here's a little trick as well. As soon as you start to put it to the minus side, it gets darker. If you go to the plus side, it actually makes you <clears throat> a white vignette, excuse me. So when you go to the minus side, you make a dark vignette. So the first thing I do is I pull it fairly dark. Then I pull my feather down all the way to zero. And what it does is it allows me to see the shape of the vignette that I'm going to be making. So I can adjust the shape by roundness. I like mine a little bit rounder. I can make it smaller or I can make it bigger using the midpoint. So I want to pull it in fairly close and to about something like that. So that's the shape that I want. Um, I'm going to pull the feather back up so it gradually gradates from dark to light. And if I decide it's too dark, I can pull that back a little bit as well. Okay. Highlights down here on this one brings back the sky. So notice how that sky up there has gone kind of gray. So any area that you've vignetted that looks gray, you can actually bring those back with this slider. 
If you want to maintain more of the integrity of the color in your image, then you might want to try the color priority vignette instead of the highlight vignette. I tend to switch between those two. I don't use the third all that often. Okay, so let's look at a quick before and after. All right, we're getting there, looking pretty good. Now, the one thing that I want to feature in this image is that wall that's being painted and the scaffolding that's going up. Notice that the tire isn't even touching the ground. So I want to feature that and I want to sort of minimize all the other activity going on, the tourists and the guy with the camera and so on. So what I want to do is I want to darken the edges a little bit more selectively than just an edge vignette. Okay. So there's two tools that are built into Lightroom now that will allow you to do that. One is the edge vignette. You can graduate a filter tool. So you can grab that from up here using this button, or you can use M on your keyboard, which is the shortcut for the graduated filter. Okay. So the way the graduated filter works is it gives you this little crosshairs. When you start at the edge of the image and drag in, you're going to be creating your starting point and your ending point for whatever effect you're going to apply. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to darken this left edge a little bit so I can focus the, the attention into the center of the image. Okay? It automatically applies the last thing that you did or the last brush that you used. To reset it, just double click effect. In this case now, I want to bring the highlights down on that wall, and I might want to darken it overall, so I'm going to bring the exposure down. Okay? Once you place it, you can, you can move it around and angle it and adjust it. You can even spread out the, the feather a little bit more if you want. Okay? I'm going to do another one very similar coming up from the bottom. Okay? So notice that it used the same settings that I just used, okay? which is very nice because that works pretty well for this one. To close it, just press the M key again or use the same little button up here on this menu. The next one we're going to use is the new one which is called the radio filter. Okay, and that's this one here, the second one from the right. You can get to it using Shift M or clicking on the icon and it opens up a similar menu. Okay, so if you want to start to reset it from the beginning, just double click effect again. And I'm going to do a few different things with this one. So I'm going to apply this, the shape of it first, but I want to see where it's going. So again, another little trick. If I just make my exposure really dark, whatever I do is going to show up really black. Okay? So it's going to show me where this thing is going. Just put your little crosshairs into the center of where you want it to, to radiate out from, and then just start dragging it out. Okay? So you can see that my darkening is really done a quite a good job of showing me where this is going to apply. So if I wanted to apply that, that's going to be pretty dramatic. Okay, so I could do that, or I could scale it back a little bit to something a little bit more realistic. Okay, so I like that. So what's happening is you can see that it's applying to this circle in the center. If I turn my feather down, that's the area that I am applying the vignette to, so the outer area. If I want to do it opposite, you just click invert. <coughs> Okay, so I'm going to leave my feather in the middle. Okay, so the other thing that I want to do besides darken the edge is I want to bring the saturation down quite a bit because I want to feature that wall and not so much the lady in the red sweater and the milk crate on the, on the right hand side. So I'm going to bring my saturation down quite a ways. Okay, it looks like about minus 56. Okay. I might even feather it a little bit less so I have more of a strong edge. I'm going to bring my clarity down now, so clarity is going to sort of soften that outer bit, not too much, just gently, so that the focus again is on that inner bit where the wall is. I can also change the shape of it and reposition it just by grabbing it. So if I want to get a little more of the buildings, I can do that. If I want to make it more oval, I can do that. You can totally adjust it once you, pl once you put it into place. <clears throat> okay, so if I'm happy with that, I might bring my highlights down and my contrast down. So I'm really minimizing the area around the wall by doing this. Okay, once you're happy with it, shift M or click the icon to close it. Okay, go back to your basic panel once again. Now you might need to make some other slight adjustments like increase the exposure a little bit on this one. And I noticed that it's looking a little bit on the overall flat side. So I'm going to do my Alt Option key and my black slider to increase the blacks again and it might give me a little bit more contrast overall. Okay. 
So fairly quickly, we've gone from something that looked like that to something that looks like that. Let's see how close we got to the first time I did it. Pretty close, okay? I think the only thing that I did was I increased my clarity a little bit more and then my blacks a little bit more as well. Okay, so pretty close. Let's take a look at the second image, which is a fairly typical type of image that you might take when you're traveling, right? It's a grab shot. Maybe you're trying to run and grab a bus or a taxi or something, and it's a famous place, and you just want to grab a quick photo, which is what I did here. The light is not great. It's tilted. Um, uh, the building is backlit, so it's got a few issues. Okay, so right off the top, I'm going to start with the basic panel again to try and correct some of that contrast problem. The easiest way to do that is to take your highlight slider all the way down, which is to the left, and bring your shadow slider, which is like turning on the lights, all the way to the right. Okay, so I'm probably not going to leave it there. I might end up somewhere in the middle, but for now, let's leave it somewhere fairly high. Okay, I'm going to give it a little bit of clarity because that always adds a nice little bit of punch to the image. It's looking rather yellow as well, so I'm going to turn down some of the yellow just because I know this is in bright sun and it's probably somewhere, should be somewhere under 6,000, okay? I know that this is a yellow building and the sky is blue. We know this, okay? So let's do a little bit of selective adjusting using this third panel down, which is your HSL. If you have all of them showing like this, just click on HSL and you'll be able to see them one at a time. So what we're going to do is we're going to do what's called a targeted adjustment just to particular colors to lighten or brighten or saturate them. I mean, there's this fabulous little thing here, this little uh, circle called, um, it's a targeted adjustment tool. So if you grab this, when you click on this little thing, it's the same as the eyedropper we did in the other one for color correction. When you grab this and place it on an image, wherever you click and hold, drag your cursor up and down. Now watch my sliders as I do this. So my blue slider is going way down. If I want to brighten it, I just increase it by pushing it up. So down slides everything to the left, which in this case is luminance. So that's brightness. is It's decreasing the brightness of that color that I'm currently on. Okay. If I wanted to increase the brightness of my building, I would just do the opposite. Click on the yellow building and push it up. Okay. Now let's say I want a little bit more color punch, but I just want color in the sky and in the building. So head over to the saturation section there, do the same thing, click and drag it up. Try not to go too far and make things that look a little bit garish and over the top. This is not normal, this is a nuclear sky. Okay, so keep it a little bit more normal looking, a little bit realistic, give it punch, but let's not go over the top. I'm gonna give the building a little bit more color, spruce that up a little. Okay, and maybe even the top of this this dome here, this green dome. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. To get out of that mode and get rid of that little eyedropper, just hit your escape key and it will go back into its little pocket. Okay. The next thing we're going to do is our lens corrections again. Uh, basic, just tick the two off, enable profile corrections and re co remove chromatic aberration. I can't say them, but I can tick them. And once again, if it doesn't find your lens, go to the panel and just choose your brand and it should find it. If it doesn't find it, choose one that's that's similar. I find that sometimes it doesn't find my Tamron lens and so I have to choose Canon. I know that it's a 17, so I'm just gonna choose something that has a similar focal length, okay? It'll get me a similar result, okay? So I'm gonna bring the vignetting down a little bit just to keep my corners a little bit darker. And the last thing we're going to do is go back to that lens corrections basic again. So you, there's a few different ways we can correct this image in terms of the tilt. You'll notice that everything is sort of leaning to the right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click level and it's going to try and find the horizon, correct it for me and constrain the crop, meaning if it's cropping the image, if the any of the images, it needs to be cropped out to keep the proportions, it's going to do that as well, all automatically for me. Okay, so I'm going to click level and wait, and that's what I get. So that's pretty darn good. Okay, it looks pretty good to me. It looks like everything is nicely up and down vertical. That should be up and down vertical. Okay, so we could take this a little farther if we wanted to. We could add a bottom vignette again to darken the sidewalk. 
that's a little too dark. Make sure you get a nice um, spread between dark and light so that it's gradually adjusting. Okay? Don't go to extremes and have a hard line. Okay? I could do the same thing in the sky as well. I might add one over here. So watch as I drag, as I continue to drag, it just widens the spread. Okay? So that's the feather area. And I'm not going to add my exposure down here. I'm just going to bring the highlights down to bring those clouds down even more. Okay? M key to, to tuck it away again. So let's take a look at a quick before and after. Okay, so before, tilted, contrasty mess. After, nicely color corrected, contrast corrected, nicer. Okay, pretty close to the first view. Actually, we did better than the first one. Okay, so you can do a few more tweaks by using your adjustment brush and some of the other targeted tools. So that's it for today's tutorial. I'm going to leave it there for you today and hopefully you've picked up a few tips along the way to use your basic panel, some keyboard shortcuts, and how to quickly correct your images for some, some pretty common things that come out of the camera. Take care and we'll see you next time.